Hey guys, um, so we've changed location for a bit, um, I'm currently house sitting for a friend while she's away, so forgive the bare walls behind me, because this is her spare room. Um, also for this vlog, I have very limited books for what I can read, because I only brought a small stack with me and my Kindle, but, um, First update, I have read um, A Broken Blade by Melissa Blair, um, YA dark-ish fantasy with Faye um, following an assassin for the king who sends out to kill a target and uncovers a whole plot to hit down the monkey. Um, really great. The audiobook was great as well. Um, it's YA, but it borders towards the end to more older YA with a bit of touch of spice. Um, I do also have a Shadow Crown on my Kindle, which I'll be getting to soon. But I am currently in the middle of reading a lot of books and I wanted to finish some of those off. Especially since I've been in a real manga mood recently and I'm now getting back into novels. So I read that. Um, the next two I'm going to be finishing... Uh, Before the Coffee Gets Cold um, by Doshikazu Kawaguchi because I'm halfway through this. I'm also currently halfway through um, The Unity Game by Leonora Mariel so that will also be finished. Um, I also brought um, Meddling Kids with me because I'm a quarter of the way through that and um, The Alan Rickman Diaries because I'm a fair chunk into this. And then, those are the ones I'm just actively in the middle of reading. Um, I went ahead and started rereading Empire of the Vampire. I'm not very far into this. Only about 30 pages. Because um, I'm having a tattoo based up this very soon. So I wanted to reread it. Um, but I was thinking before I get sucked into this behemoth, um, I've got to finish a couple of these. I mean, just for the fun of it. Um, I got sent a re review copy of Slaying the Virus and Vaccine Dragon. Um, this is non-fiction science. Um, so I will be reading this at some point, but I'm going to finish some of this soon. Um, so that's the plan right now. I do also have a bunch of stuff on my Kindle that I've got to finish for NetGalley and Edelweiss. Um, and then I still have a bunch of manga that I want to read, but I'm going to limit that because I do binge read the series um, and it can take up quite a lot of time. So I'll save them for next month, but the priority for today at least will be finishing this. Um, it's only like 200 and something pages and I am currently... 110 pages in so I am halfway um so I will be able to finish this probably in the next couple of hours um and I'll update you on that um when I get to it um so this is four interconnected stories um centered around a cafe in Tokyo that allows you to travel through time um so basically there's four stories centering around different characters so story one is the lovers um, and it follows a couple one has left for america for work and his girlfriend basically broke up with him before he did um but she didn't want to break up with him um it was just a matter of pride um so she goes back in time to have that conversation again with him but one of the rules about the cafe is that nothing you do in the past affects the present. But it brings her a lot of closure and obviously going forward she's going to speak to her boyfriend and work things out between them. Um, the second story is one that really breaks my heart and it's husband and wife. And 
it's about a couple, the wife is a nurse, um, and her husband has early onset Alzheimer's, and he is forgetting things. And at the beginning of the story, he has forgotten that she is his wife, because he calls her by her maiden name, not her married name. And he um, he lets slip to one of the cafe workers about why he wants to travel through Thames to give his wife a letter. His wife, being ever the sceptic, decides to go back in time instead and has a conversation with him just after he was diagnosed. And he says a lot of things to her that changes her perspective on his illness and their relationship when she comes back. Um, the two remaining stories are the sisters um, and mother and child. So I will be reading those two and letting you know what they're about and wrapping up my thoughts as a whole. And then I will probably, because this is quite, quite a dense read um, for a metaphysical thriller, um, going back into this i don't know whether i'll be able to finish it today but i hope so i'm currently 145 pages in and it's 285 pages so i got about 145 pages left in this so i'm hoping i can finish both of these today knock them off the tbr and then depending on how long that takes I'm probably going to go back into the Alan Rickman diaries, um, purely because it's something a bit different. It's told in diary format, so you can kind of um, just whiz through it. Um, I have been annotating it. I don't have my annotation stuff with me, but I will be making um, notes on my phone of where I want to annotate them going forward. Um, so yeah, definitely, hopefully these two today, and if I can, then... Going back into the Alan Rickman Diaries, getting that off the TBR. And then tomorrow, um, finishing the Alan Rickman Diaries, hopefully getting into this, because I've been a quarter of the way through this for over a month. And it was one of my TBR job picks, which are books I failed to read in March and April that I'm trying to finish before I pick more out my TBR job. Um, and then... If I can get those done over the next two or three days, then I'm going to break into Empire of the Vampire again. Um, so, we'll see how it goes. And I'll give you an update. So I'm now three quarters of the way through before the coffee gets cold, having read um, The Sisters. So this is about the Hirai sisters, uh, Yeiko and Kumi. Um, basically, the, um, Yoko has been estranged um, from her family since she was 18. Um, after she didn't want to inherit the family in, moved to Tokyo and opened up a bar. Um, her sister Kumi has been trying to visit her repeatedly for years, but Yeko has avoided her. Um, and the last visit, which we get to see in one of the earlier stories, um, on the way back, Kumi gets in a car accident and dies. After the funeral, Yeko comes back and wants to go back and have that final meeting with her sister, um, which the cafe staff facilitate. Um... And when she goes back, she realises, um, her sister tells her directly that the, she wasn't angry with her for not wanting to inherit the inn. She was angry because her dream growing up was to run the inn with Yeko. And this breaks Yeko's heart even more than it already is, having, um, in the process of burying her sister. Um... And she promises her sister she is going to run the inn with her. Um, but obviously we know that's not going to happen because Kumi is dead. Um, and she's a, um, about to return to the present because um, 
her coffee is about to get cold and she almost doesn't drink it because she wants to see Kumi one more time before she goes back. Um, but she's in the bathroom and time is literally running out for Yeko and she ends up going back without seeing her sister that last time. But the cafe staff obviously recognise she's from the future and um, tell Kumi that her sister will keep her promise. And when she goes back to the present, she is making preparations to go to her parents' inn to learn how to run it um, the way Kumi was going to run it and the way she thinks her sister would have wanted them to run it together. Which was heartbreaking. Um, the last story in this is Mother and Child. And if I remember correctly, it has something to do with a time traveller from the future that shows up in the sisters. Um, she doesn't give her name, but she's obviously quite a young teenager and all she wants, all she came back for was to take a picture with Kay. Kay is the wife of Nagare, who owns the cafe. Um, and this confuses everyone, so like, why did this teenager come back to the past to take a picture with Kay? But it's, um, there have been hints dropped that Kay is not only pregnant, but she has a serious illness, um, and if I'm remembering correctly, it's cancer. Um, and the thing with cancer treatments like chemotherapy and radiotherapy is, um, they're very damaging if you're pregnant. And um, if I'm remembering this correctly, you typically have two options, and that's to um, terminate the pregnancy and con continue treatment or stop treatment to continue the pregnancy. Obviously both have quite um, physical and mentally damaging effects. Um, but don't quote me on that because it's been a long time since I read this. So I'm going to read the last story now, being as it's not that long, I don't think. Yeah, it's about 40-ish pages. So I'm gonna read this last one. Um, sum up my thoughts on rereading the first book because I know on books two and three books four and five haven't been translated into English yet but I am hopeful um, and then I will go on to something else but I'll keep you up So it's been quite a while since I've done an update. Obviously you can see the nearly decorated room. Um, I finished before the coffee gets cold. Um, absolutely loved it, as always. Um, so yeah, I finished that. Five stars, amazing. I can't wait to, wait to read the rest of the series. Um, and then I actually read quite a lot since I last updated you but I was house sitting for a friend so I didn't film there um so I read the uh, a broken blade by Melissa Blair um for a blog tour um I do have the shadow crown to also read I finished the unity game really weird really trippy actually ended up really enjoying it keeping it four stars brilliant um and then I read Slaying the Virus and Vaccine Dragon. Very worth the read. Um, can't say much about it on YouTube, but definitely go and check it out if you're um, interested in stuff that's happened over the past two or three years. Um, really insightful. Um, then, on a non-fiction binge, I read The Cases That Haunt Us by Johnny Douglas, who wrote Mindhunter. Absolutely love it. I flew through that in about two days. It was brilliant. Um, not as good as Mindhunter but pretty close and I do have a bunch of um, Douglas's other works to get into. Um, and then I read Is the Algorithm Plotting Against This by Kenneth Wenger? Wenger? Um, 
yeah, it was interesting. Um, main issue with it is it calls itself a layman's guide to um, the mathematics and pitfalls of AI. But um, for me, I've got college level qualification in chemistry, which um, has quite a lot of mathematical element, blah, 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 mathematical elements. Um, and I really struggled to follow this, so uh, it's definitely not a layman's guide, it's quite technical, but if you do have a background in mathematics, um, engineering, computer science, anything like that, then you'll probably really enjoy it. Um, so yeah, that capped off what I re finished reading last month, um, including all the manga volumes I read, I read a total of 50 books. Um, in May, which was outstanding for me, um, and then kicked it straight off in June. I read um, The Alchemy of Moonlight by David Ferrero, um, absolutely outstanding, five stars, queer historical f fantasy, um, paranormal ish. But yeah, um, my favorite thing about that was the romance and all the, the stuff around that it was brilliant and the way that relationship ended was brilliant um i would love for david ferrero to make this a series or even a duology so we can see what happened after because i really need to follow these characters more my favorite personally um were blanche and brown they outstanding love them um, so yeah, I am on a big kick with my books recently. Um, one I have been slacking on that I'm going to try and catch up on this month is the Anita Blake series. Um, I am still on Obsidian Butterfly. I was hating it so much I put it down and have not picked it back up. So, we will see how that goes. But I am currently reading um, Dying to Know You by Agent Chambers. It's actually really cute i'm already a quarter of the way through it um the only way i can describe this is you know the scene in the fall to our stars where gus goes to van houten to write um hazel's eulogy um imagine that but funny contemporary romance so basically um you have this boy carl who goes to see this um local author who is uh unnamed he doesn't have a name we know he's male um but that's about it um we know he's male and that's about it and carl goes to him for um writing letters to his girlfriend fiorella um because she's a big reader a big writer and she wants carl to kind of bear his soul to her but carl is dyslexic and struggles displaying emotion which is why he's gone to the author um and it's just carl meeting up with this author discussing his feelings and thoughts around certain topics and the author translating them into fancier words for Fiorella. um so really enjoying this i'll probably finish this today because it's less than 300 pages um and then after that, I do have a blog tour for the 10th of June, um, which is the duology None Shall Sleep and Some Shall Break by Ellie Marnie. Now, some of you will remember, I have read The Killing Code by Ellie Marnie. I didn't love it, but it was good. Something different in the World War II young adult fiction genre, which, you know, helped. But World War II fiction is really overdone, especially in YA. Um, so I'm looking forward to this. It's set in the 80s and it follows two people who, two teens who are like, um, from what I understand, they requested to join the FBI and help catch um, teenage and young serial killers and things like that. Um, so I'm really excited to see that because it sounds... Not the same as a good girl's going to murder, but like it's similar kind of premise where you've got these two people um solving crimes and mystery, you know, maybe some thriller elements. Um 
So I'm really looking to, forward to getting into those. And then um, I'm going to lean over for just a second to grab these. So I have this little stack here. So um, one of these is from my previous challenges, Meddling Kids by Edith Cantero. I will also be finishing this very soon. Um, I am rereading Emperor of the Vampire um, because it, it has been announced on Twitter that um, Empire of the Damned is coming out next year. And I want to reread this. Um, then I have one that's been on my shelf for God knows how long, but it sounds interesting, which is Hungry by H.E. Sway. Um, oh, here comes the cats. And then I was very kindly um, sent two books here from an author on TikTok um, looking for reviews. Um, and... I don't know what drew me in, it was just the fact he was talking about them in one of his TikToks. I thought, how sci fi? Something I have been going into with things like Dune and really enjoying. So I reached out and asked for some copies. He did send me the entire um, four book series, which is the trilogy and the prequel um, in digital format, but he also very kindly sent me um, the first two books in paperback format. So we have um, Throne of Darkness by Spencer and Russell, Russell Smith and Sanctuary. Now these are pretty hefty boys, um, especially Sanctuary. It's... Oh, bye Mr. Boots. <laughs> um, it's pretty close to 500 pages. Um, and then Throne of Darkness is just over 300 so um, these are going to be on my summer TBR um, potentially the entire series but definitely these first two and then one that my um, brother actually helped me pick I've been challenging myself to read more of my physical TBR that I own so what I did on all my bookshelves is um, all the books I haven't read I turned around to face this way and then the ones I have read face this way so it kind of gets on my <laughs> book nerves to see them this way around. So it's prompting me to read more of them. Um, and because I'm terrible at making choices, I typically ask my mum or my brother to pick something off the shelf um, once I've finished a book. Um, so my brother picked the last ones. Um, which were Dying to Know You and Rebel by Amy Tintero. Um, Rebel obviously is the second book um, in the duology. It's Reboot and Rebel. So both of those are on my TBR. Moving on to Kindle stuff um, I'm planning to read that I also have audiobooks of um, because my Audible library is getting pretty full um, we've got um, Voyage of the Basilisk by Marie Brennan, the third book in the Lady Trent series. That is going to be checked off soon. Um, Reprieve by James Han Matson. Um, yeah, I got that review of um, Kayla on YouTube um, from Books and Lala. Um, House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson. Now, um, Kayla from Books and Lala really enjoyed um, The Hour of the... I can't remember what it's called that. Um, Hour of the Witching or something like that. Um, but it just didn't appeal to me. I started reading it and I might give it another go. But House of Hunger definitely sounds right up my alley. And um, The First to Die at the End by Adam Silvera. Um, I'm not a contemporary person, but I did love They Both Die at the End, so I'm excited to see the prequel for that. Um, I also have the entire Kingdom 
of the Wiki Trilogy by Kerry Monskalko. I have read books one and two. Didn't really like book one. Book two is slightly better, but I do own book three as my brother bought it for my birthday in February. So I'm going to reread the whole series and finish it off. Um, and then I've got two by Grady Hendrix, How to Sell a Haunted House, and We Sold Our Souls. Now I have read a lot of Grady Hendrix, and the thing I found is his endings aren't that great, but the rest of the books typically are. So I'm excited to see if that changes. Um, and then I've got King of Fools and Queen of Bolts by Amanda Foody. Um, I read Ace of Spades and really loved it. Um, and then I've got the entire Bone Witch trilogy by Rin Chupeco. Um, just because it sounded fun. Heart of the Sun Warrior because um, Daughter of the Moon Goddess was an absolute five star for me and I need to know how that duology ends. Um, I've got the rest of the Greta Helsing series, so um, Dreadful Company and I can't remember what the last book is called, um, but those two because they were really cute, contemporary, paranormal, um, really cute. Um, the next two books in the last hour series, so uh, Chain of Iron and Chain of Gold. I can't remember. Uh, I do own both of those, so. Uh, God Emperor of Dune, this is book four in the extended Dune series. I've read the original trilogy, so Dune, Dune, Children of Dune. I can't remember what the middle book was called now, but it's Dune something and Children of Dune. I've read all of those. Um, also continuing with The Weird and Wonderful, I have Born by Jeff Vandermeer, because I've read the Annihilation series and actually really enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, I do have a bunch more on there, but, um, and this isn't just for June, but this is like over the course of the summer. Um, so yes, we are going to be really busy um, for the next couple of weeks and I will certainly keep you updated.